Welcome back to another example from chapter 8. So in this situation, we have a cart that's moving, and it's going to roll downhill. And so when we see this situation and then it collides, that means that the collision is step 2, and the step 1 is going to be the energy problem that involves rolling downhill. So step one, energy, step two, momentum. We have seen two-step problems work the opposite direction, but as a reminder to us, a two-step problem involves two steps that cannot be skipped. They have to be done in the correct order, and the end of step one becomes the start of step two. So end of step one becomes the start of step two. We need to make sure we understand why we do the things that we do in this class and not just try to kind of memorize the fact that we do them. So in this situation, we are dealing with an energy problem at the very beginning. Just the four kilogram cart is involved. The before is the cart here at the top of the hill. So this is the before. And the after is the cart at the bottom of the hill, before the collision, though. So after is still the after for step one. It happens not yet collided. We're just doing step one. All right, so in this case, step one is the energy problem. So we have before and after in our little chart. We remind ourselves that the reason we make the chart is to keep everything organized, to help train our brain that we're asking all these questions. So we're asking about kinetic energy, potential energy from gravity. It is useful to train ourselves to be looking for springs this whole time, and then for work as well. All right, so let's go through some yes or no questions. At the beginning of the problem, are we moving? The answer is yes, because we have this piece of information. One half mv initial squared. At the beginning of the problem, are we higher? Yes, we are at the top of the hill. Is there a spring? No. All right, are we moving at the end of the step one energy problem? The answer is yes, we are moving. And we're going to be using that speed that we get at the end in step two. So we'll call it B final, but we know that it's going to be the end of step one, not the end of the problem. Are we higher at the end of the step one energy problem? No. Is there a spring? No. We ask ourselves, is there a work term? We're looking for a push or a pull or friction or air resistance, things like that. And none of that's here. So now we can write out the energy problem. So energy before plus work added equals energy after. It really is important to be writing this out so that anything that you are referring back to, whether it's notes, whether it's problem set problems, that all of that is useful to you and not just numbers on the page. The best way to do that is to write everything out as you go through it. So we have one half m v initial squared plus mgh plus zero. For the work term, because we said no, we say plus zero. And then for the energy after term, we have one half mv final squared plus zero plus zero. We can plug in the numbers that we have. One half times just the four kilogram block. All of this was asking about the four kilogram block. That's why we circled it and labeled before and after to really help remind ourselves of this. And that four, even though it's to the left, we're squaring it. Energy has never cared about the direction. The kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. For MGH, we have four kilograms times 9.8 is 20 centimeters, the height is 0 0.20 meters times 0 0.2. The other terms are zero. And on the right side, we have 1 half times 4 times our unknown v final squared. 
So this, uh, sorry, on the right. So on the right side, we have 1 half times 4 is 2v final squared. On the left, I'm going to put all of this into my calculator and get one single number. So all of that on the left side is 39.84 joules. So you can divide both sides by 2. And then we'll take the square root. So the square root of this 19.92 that's left is our v final. And so we get 4.46 meters per second. And that is at the bottom of the hill right before the collision. So bottom of hill and before the collision. That is the end of our step one, but it's the start of our step two. So now we move on to step two, which is our momentum problem. I'm going to scroll the page down a bit so that we can have some extra space. And if we think about the step two, because it is the collision, we need to use momentum conservation. And so we want to treat this like a momentum problem. In our momentum problems, we know that one of the most important things we can do is keep track of the numbers that we're given. And so the first mass, if we read left to right, the first mass is the 3 kilogram block, and it starts at rest. The second mass is the 4 kilogram block. And it starts at a speed of 4.46, 4.46 meters per second. And since we've drawn it left, it's useful to kind of have that minus sign because we definitely need to train ourselves for most of the chapter eight problems to worry about that. Uh, and so we write out the momentum conservation equation, M1V1 initial plus M2V2 initial equals m1v1 final plus m2v2 final. Now, because these stick together, the final velocity of the first is the same as the final velocity of the second. And just to make it super, super clear for us, we'll call it final, final. It's the end of the problem, not just the end of the step. All right, so let's plug in some numbers. 3 times 0 plus 4 times negative 4.46 is equal to 3 v final final plus 4 v final final. All right, the right side is just 7 v finals. And the left side, the first term goes away. 3 times 0 is still 0 and negative 17.85. We divide both sides by seven. Oops, by seven. We get our final answer. Uh, the biggest open space I have left, <laughs> which is, um, and I'm going to ignore the negative sign because we cared about the speed. It's still kind of here, um, although mostly scrolled off this um, slide. 2.55 meters per second, and we are still moving to the left. So that is our final answer. It makes sense to us that we slowed down in the collision because we lost a lot of the energy when we stuck together. And so this first step made sense because we sped up because we rolled downhill, but then we slowed down because we hit the object. These two steps both have to happen. They have to happen in that order. And as a reminder to us, the end of step one was the start of our step two. And that is absolutely essential to be not just able to reproduce, but to understand why that happens. So if you need help on two-step problems, they are one of the tougher physics problems, not toughest math, but toughest physics problems from the chapter. Please make sure that you're asking for help in office hours or email. We want to help make sure that everything makes sense to you. We have two more uh, numbered or lettered examples for the chapter. And so I will see you in those next videos.